Good morning, brothers and sisters, or good afternoon, rather. Um, the time is 12.44 on um, June the 28th of 2016. Uh, I wanted to come on here today for a reason. Something's really been on my heart here lately that I see a lot of people tiptoeing around. And uh, I want to say this is something that's been on my heart for a while. It occurred to me when I was, this has been probably about a year ago, when I told my nephew that his choice of living lifestyle was sending him to hell. And he called me some names and he told me he wished I was dead and all this stuff. But just because I told him that living in a sodomite life was sending him to hell. And which he knows this too because he knows that I came out of it. As I've said before, the Lord brought me out of it. He delivered me. It was nothing I did. It was all Christ did. Christ brought me out of it. He delivered me from, you know, the pot smoking, the cigarettes, the, uh, and just take the cigarettes up with God. Don't, you know, don't get mad at somebody because they're telling you where they came from. I was a chain smoker, like I said before in many videos. I used to smoke one after another, one after another. I put one out. I like one off the one I was putting out. Okay, that's how bad. When I was cleaning the house, I had a cigarette lit in every room. So I know what it's like to be addicted to something. I was addicted to pot. I couldn't live without it. If I, in, in fact, if I didn't have pot, I had liquor, and I was I was toasted, roasted in something, you know. But God showed me I didn't need that. I needed Him. There's a lot of people that are hiding their true emotions in a bottle of beer or a rolled up joint or Something that I've never done is snort coke or, or, or crack or crank or any of that stuff. I've never done anything harder than, than maybe pop a mu muscle relaxer with a beer. And that's a very deadly uh, cocktail right there to mix, you know, together. You should never do that. But God kept me safe through all of this for me to be here at this time. And today, this is on my heart. And like I've told you guys before, I come on here and speak from the heart. It's got nothing to do with me personally. This is what I feel in my heart that I need to talk to people about. I know this is a, a pretty, you know pretty frequent video considering I just done one yesterday and I done one um, two days ago but I just feel that I'm supposed to come on here and let you guys know what God has given me or what I feel God has moved in my spirit to talk about we have many brother you know many brothers and sisters out there who are troubling or really staggering over this same problem they don't want to hurt no one's feelings by telling them the truth I just want to tell you guys that standing by and letting someone live in sin is not the way a Christian should live their life. You know, if that person hates you and walks away from you, or say they hate you and walked away from you, well, for number one, if they don't know Jesus Christ, they don't know love. Because without Christ, there is no love, okay? That's one thing I want you to know up front. With um, everything that's going on in the world today, you know, we can tell that the time is at the very point of Christ's return. If we have family members that are living lives of the in the world, such as sodomitry, drinking, partying, fornicating, which means they're with different partners, they're living with their girlfriend, living with their boyfriend, and I'm talking about man with women and women with man, which also man and man, women and women, it's all sin. And no matter if two women say I do to each other, God says I don't. God does not bless that unity. It is an abomination to God. The sodomite life is an abomination. Homosexual, lesbian, whatever you want to call it, it is abomination to the Father God in heaven. And it's our job as Christians to be out there telling people that we know. And if they get mad, you know what? They weren't a true friend anyway. Don't put yourself in a path of someone who's living a life for the devil and thinking just because you, you, you've come to the Lord that you're strong enough to handle it because you're not. God sent his disciples up two by two. See, I believe in a way, too, it's like some, if they were there, the two that said, I believe God put them in this way. I believe he put the two together that had two different types of, uh, of temptation. One may have been drinking, and the other one may have been, you know, uh, could have been like, um, I don't know. It could have been, one could have been a drinker, and the other one could have been a, been a, a sex fiend. You, know, you don't know what the deal was. I'm just saying this for example. Well, he didn't send, send someone who was, you know, oversexed uh, with someone else oversexed to go to a woman's house to, to testify to him. He, he put the two together that he wanted because he knew together they would keep each other accountable. And as Christians, what we're supposed to do, me personally, I don't want to go into a homosexual's house and try to tell them about the life they're living in by myself. I would go and talk to them. I'd want someone else who, who's never experienced that life to keep me accountable. You know what I'm saying? Keep me accountable for what I'm doing. Because, you know, even though I don't have a temptation, it doesn't mean the devil can't bring it upon me because I'm in someone around it. Because that's the past. When you get around your past, it can make you have be cursed even worse than you were in the first place. Because it's what it says. They swept the house clean of them, but when they came back, they were twice as many. And, 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 the, and the possession was twice as hard. Because, see, I remember one time back in 2009, or 2008, 2009, I had uh, went back to smoking after God had delivered me from it. 
I was off in like two weeks, and uh, I decided, you know, I, I wanted my cigarettes. I mean, I, I didn't have really. I, it was it was a flesh. It was not it was not a need that I needed in my body. I wasn't nic- you know fiending for nicotine or nothing like that. But it was a habit I had, so I wanted it back. So I went and I started smoking cigars. And this is the truth. I remember it as well as it was yesterday in 2010. And I had started in 2009 smoking either orange, grape, strawberry, whatever flavor I could get of cigars. No, I wasn't big on inhaling them. It was just the idea to have something in my hand, and, and I didn't need it. And I remember one day I looked down at my hand, and, and I had thrown away all ashtrays in my house. Everything, you know, even relatable to smoking, I had thrown away. But I had this, I went and bought these cigars, so I got a saucer out of my, uh, like a bowl saucer out of my cabinet, and I used it for an ashtray. And um, I remember looking at my hand, thinking, that looks so stupid in my hand. And before that, I never saw a cigarette in my hand as being stupid, but I did. I thought, that looks stupid, because God was let me know, it doesn't belong there anymore, and it don't. I, I remember I was um, driving one time through town, and I felt like everyone, or, and it was conviction. In this world, people call it paranoia, but it was conviction. I felt like every person I drove by was looking at me because I smoked a cigar going up the road. And I was like, I can do whatever I want to. I'm past 30 years old. Which I was, I was 30, 39 going on 40. And um, this has been about eight years ago. Well, almost eight years ago. Maybe, maybe seven years ago. Let's put seven, more like seven years ago. And I was heading home at the time. I lived in a place called Mount Hope. And uh, it's in West Virginia, above Beckley. And uh, I'm actually about 100 and some miles away from all that now. Thank God. I, I, I'm glad I'm away from all... The people that I was around up there were the ones that were in the lifestyle too. And I still pray for them. But God has taken many people out of my life, which I don't miss the people he's removed out of my life. I really don't. One was even like a tr- little, like a sister to me. I know her from the time I was 15 and she was four. And I've known her, third, like I said yesterday, 35 years. She'll be 39 years old this coming, um, this coming um, September the 3rd. And um, I've talked to her and told her the truth, you know, and it's like we have no connection. I even told her she's welcome to come and visit me if she wanted to, but, and if her partner was with her, that there was no holding hands and kissing in my house. She said, oh, she said, I know that. I said, yeah, I I don't like any of that around me. And she knows I don't smoke anymore or anything like that, too, because God delivered me from all that. But see, like I was saying, you know, I remember I was in my apartment up in in Oak Hill, uh, or Mount Hope, sorry, Mount Hope. Oak Hill was the next town up, which we did all of our grocery shopping if we didn't want to go to Beckley, which is the bigger town. Mount Hope, uh, Oak, uh, Oak, was, Oak Hill was like a small version of a town that you could get easy to the groceries, go back home, it wasn't a big deal. But anyway, um, Lord help me, please. I want this to help somebody, okay? Um, I was um, in my bedroom upstairs one night, and... I was crying out to God, please take this. I can't do it myself. And I knew he had took it before, but I knew he would take it again. I was his child, you know, and, and I was being convicted. Like, if I went to church right across the road from where I lived at, at the apartments, um, I remember um, I was, like, um, over at this church, and I remember I had um, went in, and they was preaching something, but automatically to me it was about my smoking. And I came out, and I, I went to a, a, a person that went to church with me. And I said, do you, do you think God's mad at me because I'm smoking? No, not at all. And this person was a beer drinker. And I'm like, I know I don't believe in drinking or anything because God delivered me from all of it. And that's between you and God if you do. You know, I mean, I can't put you down for I know in the Bible it says give brethren, a brethren strong drink no more. And if the wine sticks to the glass or stings the tongue, drink it not. Okay? Because what that opens, that opens up a, um, a portal to hell. All alcohol and liquor changes your mindset to where you do stuff you're not aware of. And you can say, oh, I don't do that. I know. I said I didn't do it either, but there was times I did stuff I shouldn't have. And I don't remember. I don't remember this stuff. I really don't. Anyway, like I was saying, you know, um, I remember I was living up there, and I went to church, and, and I was always trying to find a way to convinced myself that I was okay with what I was doing, but God was convicting me. And I went upstairs one night in my bedroom, and I was on my knees crying out to God. 
and I was hurting. Oh, I was hurting so bad, emotionally, physically, and everything. And God did deliver me. Not that night. It was about a couple, about a week or so later. I was taking a friend down to look at some trailer she wanted. She was going to buy a trailer and move it on a lot that she owned. So, well, actually, it wasn't a friend. It was an acquaintance. I don't talk to him anymore since I moved out there. But I went and I was um, I was trying to help him. And I remember. I was sitting in my bedroom, or sitting on the floor, and I remember seeing Jesus. He was sitting there with a cigarette in his hand, smoking it. What was he doing? He was telling me, what you put in your body, you put in me, because I live inside of you. I know this. No, Jesus doesn't smoke cigarettes. But he was showing me, what I do to me, I'm doing to him, because I belong to him. I'm now have the, I now have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of me, and I can't be doing the things I once did, because that's not... That's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to clean the temple. It was about probably a couple weeks later. I saw the Lord take the cigar or the cigarette and break it. And he was telling me I'm breaking the habit. A few days later, I was free. And uh, yes, I did go back a couple of times, but I never got attached to it again. I went back a couple times because there was a friend there wanted to smoke, and I was at a, a church convention, and someone was smoking, so I smoked a cigarette, you know. And all I remember is God freed me. I never wanted it again after that. And I did cry out to God the one time, which was the last time, as I recall. I was smoking a, cig well, I smoked a couple of cigarettes, but I wasn't smoking them. I was actually just putting my mouth blowing the smoke out. I wasn't inhaling them. Uh, no, it's not a Bill Clinton moment either. But anyway, um, I wasn't inhaling them, and, and I remember coming in on my love seat and laying down and crying, God, I'm sorry. You know, I don't, I didn't need it. And I know I was forgiven. I was. And since then, that was back in 2010, six years ago, I have not touched a cigarette. I have not touched a cigarette. And I can honestly say, I can honestly say, over, it's been over six, six years since I've had it, but 2010, 2016, that's six years. So, you know what I'm saying? It's been that long since I've had any any kind, and I'm not doing that as three sixes either, so don't anybody say, oh, he was doing the mark of the beat. No. I'm doing it to show you how God can deliver us from our addictions and our habits and our our hobbies or whatever you may have. God changes your desire for the things of this world. Like right now, I have a few friends out there that would tell you their desire to be in this world is gone. The only thing they do is take care of their homes like I do, like, you know, I really need to clean my house today. I have a meeting tomorrow, but I'm not worried about it. I just don't feel like dealing with it right now. I don't feel like dealing with it because I'm, I'm, I'm just, I want to go home. I want to go home to be with the Lord Jesus. I want to go home where I can be free from all this chaos and stuff. And you know, one thing about being free is to obey the Lord. And like when I got up this morning, or well, a little bit, I got up, well, it's been over a couple, a couple hours now, I'd say. Um, and sissy, it's 12.57. Just look down, it's 12.57. You know. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, that's just something me and my sister, sissy in Christ, my sissy Mandy, we always watch the time, and it's, wow. And I woke up, I was praying last night, and looked over at my clock beside my bed, it was 3.33. And I looked over at the clock when I rolled over. Well, I was watching some little sitcoms of uh, an old sitcom back years ago called 227. I was watching it on my little Chrome tab in my bedroom before I went to bed last night. And getting myself settled down, you know, for sleep. And uh, I looked over at the clock and just constantly just gla glazed over. And it was 222. I was like, thank you, Jesus. And I know it was from God. I know it was. Behold, I come quickly. In Revelation 22, uh, verses 7... 12 and uh, 20 it says behold I come quickly and in chapter in verse uh, 12 it says behold I come quickly and my rewards are with me you know the Lord Jesus Christ is coming and it's very soon so if God is putting something on your heart that you know is it for someone you know then you need to be getting that out <clears throat> if you're not doing it you're being disobedient if you know if you don't know you don't think you can do it then you need to pray to God to help tell him to give you the words to speak what you need to speak. And if this person is, is 
following the devil, they're going to be hateful and evil back at you. But you know what? Ask God to give you the strength to be bold and stand there and say, hey, I'm just telling you the truth. I know there's people in my life, or like where I live at right now, very few people come and visit me. Very few people come and visit me. Does it hurt in a way? Yeah, because I have no one to talk to. But in another sense, it doesn't bother me because the ones who come around wouldn't be talking about God. I want to go stronger in the Lord. And you can't grow stronger with the world, being in the world. You cannot grow stronger in God. You've got to be around like-minded believers. You've got, to be, you've got to be walked together in faith, lest one disagree. Where is there any, you know, any kind of strength in two when they both don't agree upon anything? There's no strength. That's unequally yoked. And it's like if God's put on your heart, there's a certain person in your life or whatever, and, and God's telling you, you know, hey, you need to tell this person something. And, and, and you're like, well, how do I do that? And... Um, You know, you would say, well, how do I do that? God, God's going to give you the, the ability to speak it. God puts it on your heart. There's a reason for it. Like me getting up this morning, you know, and feeling this way. And, I mean, you know, it's like I was even got a confirmation. I go on Facebook, and one of my brothers in Christ had done a video on there. He does fa video, fa Facebook video. And he said, he may have a YouTube channel. I don't know. But, anyway, he said, um, don't, you know, don't sugarcoat it. Basically, is what his title said, don't sugarcoat it. You can't sugarcoat the truth to make it be, you know, when you sugarcoat a lie to make it sound truth, that lie is still a lie. You just made it taste better doing it. You made them, you made it more like you approve them doing what they're doing. A sweet sister in Christ told me one time that she was talking to a friend of hers who was a dear friend of hers, and uh, they were talking in a doctor's office, and uh, this uh, friend was telling her, which they were both Christians, and she was telling her how her and her husband were going to go to a, fr a friend or a family member or something who was in the sodomite life and was getting married to their sodomite partner. And um, she called and asked me. I said, if you support it, it's the same as being in it. Because the Bible tells us any any believer that supports a sin, like, you know, well, I, I don't agree with you, but I love you, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you. Well, the way the Bible tells us, you know, honestly, sorry about that. The way the Bible tells us is, you know, we need to be truthful to all those involved in, in any kind of sin. I'm not just talking about sodomitry. I'm talking about any kind of sin. It doesn't matter what kind of sin it is. If it's a sin, it's a sin. And, 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 and a sin leads to death, you know? As a child of God, we should always be willing to tell the truth, no matter what the cost may be. Yeah, I know there's people out there who say, well, you know, you're not my friend if you can't support... You know what? The person... Now, this is to anybody out there who, wants to, who feels that way. I just want to tell you straight out, okay? And, and listen to me at, from the heart right here, okay? I'm going to tell you the truth. I've been in that lifestyle. I know. And you know what? My mom's cousin, which at the time she told me, yeah, I wasn't very happy with her because I didn't want to hear it. I did not want to hear the truth. I did not want to hear it. I did not care what they had to say. I was just, you know, if you hear it there, it's just me unplugging my mouse to put it around the other way because it's sitting here on the wrong side of the table. Um, she was telling me the truth, and all my, I didn't want to hear it. I did not care. I was like, you know, I don't need, to, I don't want to hear this, this stuff she's going to tell me. I didn't want to hear it because you know what? It was the enemy had me believe, and even though I knew in my heart that it was wrong, I knew in my heart that being in, in the side of my life was wrong. I knew it. I even come to the conclusion: well, if God doesn't say it in red, it's not meant. It's a man wrote it. No, all the word of God was breathed, breathed into the ear of the, you know, was was breathed into the ear by by the Holy Spirit. It was given? It was given by the breath of God to every man that wrote it. Every author of that Bible wrote it from God's. God's mouth and hear it. That's why we as children of God need to seek the will of God. We need to seek his voice. You know, if we're if we're allowing the world to move us in ways we should not go, then we're not going to hear from God. We're not going to be pleasing God because we're not listening to God. You know, the way I feel God tells me is he puts something really hard on my heart and I have to come on here and talk to you guys about it. And there's times I get on here and I don't know where the I don't know where any of my videos are going to go when I get on here because I'm not on here for myself. I don't have a written paper I'm written, reading from. I don't have anything. This is words from my heart, I tell you. And I have um, I have a dear sister in Christ, which is my sister Mandy. She, Her ministry is sharing my videos in groups. I'm hoping that she realizes that. Last night we listened to pa Pastor Lawson. And he was talking about people posting his, you know, he don't post nothing on Facebook or, or YouTube or anything. He said he, there's people that do that because it's their ministry to post it up there. Something as simple as posting the word. Is also a ministry. Isn't that something? How God can use the simplest things to move someone into the kingdom. 
And telling the truth is a ministry that we need to stick to. No matter if you're out shopping with somebody, and maybe sometimes getting people out in public may not be the best way to tell them something, but it surely couldn't be a bad way. If, it, if God puts on your heart then and there, then say, you know, there's something that's on my heart, and I need to speak to you about it. And I need you to understand first, and I'm only telling you this because I love you, because truth is love is in truth, and truth is love. Jesus is the truth, and he is love, and without him there is no love. If you got something that's really, you know, in your heart and it's tearing you up so bad and you're like, you can't get it off your heart, there's someone in your life you need to talk to, you need to talk to. Now, I'll tell you, I had a big problem one time and I was watching something. It was a little program on TV before I got rid of my cable. I was laying on the couch one day and I was watching it. Um, I know, I wasn't laying on the couch. It's back when I had a half-size bed. I, I like to remember what I'm doing. I used to have a half-size bed in my living room and I gave it to a neighbor that needed it. Um, but anyway, I was laying on that half-size bed, and I was laying there listening to um, listening to a uh, a preacher or a preaching program on one of the gospel, you know, Christian channels. Supposedly, I don't have any TV now. I just watch YouTube or something like that, and find stuff that's not got any cussing or anything. I don't like cuss words. Anyway, um, I was watching it, and this guy started talking about something and it was meant for me to hear it it really was because it freed me when i brought it to god I've, I've been freed from it i have really been freed from it you know there for a while my cousin god bless her heart and we're a lot closer now than we were then too to a, to a point i mean you know we still have our differences but we were um we were um lord help me we had a lot of disagreement. We had been her had a few few arguments a few times too, and it left me mad at her and her mad at me, and we had to come to each other, cry, and ask each other's forgiveness and hug each other because we couldn't handle being that way. And that's the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. You know, it is. And it's the enemy that brought us broke us apart because he wanted to see he wanted to see he wanted to see anger, pain and hurt because he doesn't like to see anybody happy I would get on YouTube and I'm, I'm admitting this to you this was a sin I would get on YouTube here and do videos and, and whatever she had done I'd put it in a format that you know people would know it's wrong but you know what it wasn't my place to get on here and say stuff about her and I have asked her to forgive me and I told her I know why I did all this stuff because I was jealous of her why was I jealous because she had a husband she had children she had a family she had her mom and dad I don't have my mom and dad. My mom and dad's been gone 14 years. But I don't begrudge her of having her mom and dad because you know what? Her mom and dad are my aunt and uncle. And I love them. And I'm glad they're here with us. I, 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 for the longest time, I thought her husband hated me. I found out he don't hate me. We don't understand each other. That's the thing. And we don't get around each other. When we talk, we see each other. We talk nicely to each other. You know, just like a few days, yesterday, actually, I got my car back yesterday evening. I told you my cousin had my car. Well, she gave it back to me. She got her car out of the shop and got mine back. And, you know, and I was happy to let her use it so that she didn't have to be stuck at trying to drive her husband's truck, who, what, that's standard and hurts her legs. Anyway, like I was saying, you know, I, uh, I just remember getting mad at her all the time and, and being vicious with her. And I would call my friends and talk about it and everything. Well, God showed me through this man on TV that there's things that are hidden in us we don't realize they're there, like jealousy and stuff like that. And I went back in my bedroom. And at this time, I will tell you, I was... Uh, um... I just, you know, sorry, one of the sisters from Tiny Chat just had a message pop up on, on my Facebook. Anyway, I was sitting in there on the bed, or on that half-size bed that was in here that time I was laying on. It was in my bedroom. I'm a person that's constantly moving furniture when I feel like it, which I'm, the only thing I did today was I swept my kitchen floor. Anyhow, um, I was in there, and I cried out to God. I said, God, I need your help. Take this jealousy. Take what I don't remember how I said it because I can't. I pray to God. I'm I like I'm talking to you right now. I'm not gonna remember these words to tell people what I said on this video. If you want to know the words, you need to watch the video because that's all I know to say. I don't remember. It's not something that I am thinking up as I go along. It's something coming from my heart. But I remember God freed me, and I felt the free. 
I felt the freedom from that jealousy when I asked God to take it. I'm not jealous of my cousin anymore. I'm not. There's times I want to be alone and she's here and I'm like, you know, it kind of ag aggravates me that she's here when I want, I need just time alone, but it's not her fault, you know. But after I get in here and start talking to her, I'm fine. I'm happy she's here till you know, she gets ready to go home. And, because she works taking care of my brother. And, uh, but anyway, like I was saying, you know, I just felt like, you know, I had a, uh, I had, such a problem and a lot of people say well how, how do you know it was jealousy well because it was burning me up inside it was burning me up inside in case you're wondering what I was doing I was moving my telephone um, it was burning me up inside it was literally burning me up inside there's no jealousy in the kingdom of God, and there shouldn't be no jealousy in a child of God you know if, if you feel if you feel you know any kind of jealousy toward anybody and you need to let God have it. You need to ask God to deliver it. And if there's a problem with you not wanting to tell people the truth, then you need to ask God to give you the strength to stand boldly for Him and tell the truth. I lost any kind of relationship I have with my nephew, and he's the only nephew I have. I have one nephew and one niece. They're my brother's children out of wetlock, of course, but it doesn't matter. They're still my niece and nephew. And, I, you know, I... I knew in my heart that, the, that their mom could have never been married to my brother. My brother's not an easy person to get along with. He's not a people person. And they, she got married to a wonderful man who treats her and, and treated those kids until they growed up. They're 25 and 26. My niece and nephew, not the woman. Uh, my, I call her my sister, Lisa. She is in her 40s. I think she's 48. She's a couple years older than me. Or a year older or something. Anyway, she might be 49 this year. I don't know. But anyhow, she... She done as good as she could. But she uh, the thing I don't really understand is she supports her kids' sodomitry. She told me back the year before last or last year that she had given her heart to God, and I was so happy to hear that. But now she's back to posting things on her Facebook that are not of God. You know, your fruits do bear up on your, uh, your Internet um, association, whether it's your Facebook or your YouTube or whatever. The things that you post are showing the, who you serve. And if you're posting jokes of this world with cuss words or anything like that in or alcohol like drinks or something like that on there, you know like party then you're showing where your where your seed is planted your seed's not with god you are planted in the devil's garden you're not in god's kingdom you're in the devil's garden you're in the devil's soil because you're allowed in his seeds to be planted through you by the drinking you're posting alcohol and pictures of you being buzzed or pictures of you talking about oh i want that drink i want this drink you know you won't see none of that on mine and if you ever do see it on any of my stuff then you will know it's not from me my page has been hacked because I will not post any devilish stuff on my page. I've seen some brothers and sisters on Facebook posting things that are, well, like for one thing they want to post, at, way out post all the time is about this election. And everybody's believing because the TBN wolves prayed over and prayed with Donald Trump that he's a Christian. Well, you know, um, if you knew anything about Kenneth Copeland, uh, about, uh, uh, I get any of them on, you got a question, TBN is a wolf. It's a, sheep, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. They can make things sound good. They got that feel-good stuff going on. I mean, okay, if you've got cable, and you can get up into most of you, and you can go to a, a Smile of a Child, and I think it's JCTV, which has rock music. I'm talking nasty rock music on it after a certain time of night. If that's a Christian channel, it should never have the devil's uh, programming on it at any time. But they do on this channel. Church TV has different stuff on. I mean, and I, from what I heard, and I don't know if it's true. You can do the, you know, you do the checking, and if you know that it's true, then please share it in a comment on here, or if you have me on Facebook, share it there. I heard that uh, the one who's actually the head over TBN, see, because TBN, the Paul Jr. is no longer in with them. They cut him out because his children were telling the truth, and he stood by his children. Um, boom! I think it's Matt Crouch which is supposed to be uh, not even Paul Crouch's child. I don't know anything about this. You check it on TBN. I mean, on TBN, it will tell about their sins. Check it out through videos, but and ask God to give you discernment. But I heard that Matthew Crouch has a porn station he owns. Porno. It's not of God. How can you be preaching God's word and having the devil's activity on another channel you own and, and you support and, and you sponsor and you pay the workers? Sorry, but... Mm -mm, that's not of God. You guys hear Jason still going at it today, the second, third, 
the fourth day. He's been verbal, I guess. Anyway, he did sleep last night. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anyway, like I want to say, if God's putting something on your heart, if it's in your heart, and you know it's for that person, bring it out and give it to him. Speak it. Speak what you've got to say. Because if you don't, how is that person going to know? God's putting it on your heart because you are his you are His worker. You're his servant. You're his royal priesthood. And he wants you to help others to come to him. And it could be that very moment he's given it to you is the moment they need to hear it. Maybe they won't act like they need it, but there's there, God says his word does not return to him void. Brothers and sisters, honestly, if God's given it to you to give to someone... To tell them their life is sending them to hell and you need to tell them. Because you know what? We're at the last few grains of the hourglass before the rapture. We're at the last few seconds of the tick of the clock. And I'm not talking about worldly time. I'm talking about godly time. In other words, we don't know if we're even promised this evening. If we have chat church this evening and, you know, um, at Wadding for Jesus, www www.tinychat.com forward slash wadding number four Jesus 2015 on Tiny Chat. I will remove the um, password for a while. Um, if you want to come in and join us, please do. We we do want people to come, and we're, I'm, I'm going to pray right now. God, give us the ability to know that you, they are sent to hear your word, and not they're not there to be um, cause trouble. Father God, we want that room to be used by you. You lead, God, and direct all things that are done, from the music to the sermons, be all by you. And Father God, I thank you for this day, and I ask you to bless this video to reach those people who need... <laughs> Sorry, you guys, it's just my brother is singing. Yeah, 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 yo. <laughs> um, God, thank you for my happy brother in there. And I just ask you, Lord, to please, please, please... Um, just please use me God to do your will and to speak your word I pray that this video reaches the eyes ears and hearts that need it and I pray it in Jesus name Amen brothers and sisters I, like I said I don't come on here with a with a script I mean the only paper I have is on this clipboard right here and it's got to do with my job it has nothing to do with this it's my, my time sheet for work that's it you know, that's where I take care of my brother. I have to send in a timesheet every once a week um, on Saturday. Saturday ends our day, our pay week. Anyway, I just want to say I thank you all and I love you all and I pray that you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And um, Lord willing, I'll see you if God has me back on here again to give a message. If not, I'll see you soon with Jesus. Uh, time is ticking. We're getting ready to go. We love you all here at uh, Wadding for Jesus 2015 channel. But God, Jesus loves you more. Father God's calling you. Are you ready? Come to him today before it's too late. God bless you. And remember, if God puts it on your heart, let it come through your mouth. Don't let someone live a lie and believe in that what they're doing is okay in God's eyes when it's not. Because in the end, they're going to feel the pain. I heard a song by the McCainies. It was called, you know, you never, you never told me about this Jesus. You know, it's time now to be witnessing. As, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. It's time right now to be witnessing to as much as you can. Much as you can. you got to watch when you do a hand signal because Illuminati's destroyed everything. You know what I'm saying? He, they have destroyed everything. Um, but um, I want you guys to know that you, please, you know, you need to, um, you need to be, um, oh Lord, help me. Please, God, help me. You need to be sharing the word with all who will listen. Jesus is coming soon. Are, are you ready? I made I, I asked some friends on my Facebook earlier. So I don't even care much for Facebook, but I have some cousins I actually added to my Facebook and was hoping that they'll see the word of God being posted on my Facebook. I don't post my videos on there. This is one this is one ministry page and that's another ministry page. And every once in a while I may mix them and put what's on like on YouTube on Facebook. And I will tell things I do on Facebook, but I don't always post everything on, on my Facebook page from YouTube because, well, I don't know. I pretty much put what I say on here in some kind of status form through the, throughout the day or something. But 
or our right is something. I think there's there are two different ministries or two different sets of people. Of course, a lot of you people that are, you know, brothers and sisters are on my Facebook are on here too. So, and I love you all. I just want to say that. I keep praying for all my brothers and sisters worldwide, and continue to pray for the peace in Israel and Jerusalem, and pray for uh, the flood victims in West Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and all the other places that's been hit. Japan and China. You know, it's just time. We're getting ready to go home. All the weather points to Jesus' return. Amen. Well, you guys, if it's in your heart, let it come through your mouth. Ask God to give you boldness to speak the truth that it may set someone free. We love you, but Jesus loves you more. Lord willing, see you next time here on Wadding for Jesus 2015, or we'll see you dancing on the streets of gold with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God bless you. Love you all.